Yo, what up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we got another video that absolutely nobody asked me to make. Uh, we're gonna go over my fuel system. Let's get started. All right guys, so if you ever watched my cooling system video, you know that the number one question I get asked when somebody sees this truck is about the radiator being in the back. Number two question I get is, hey, what's that little tank for? Everybody's wondering, what's that little tank for? Well, that is a surge tank. So this fuel system that I'm about to show you, uh, you know, it's got some valuable stuff, uh, very good ways of saving money and to make a pretty legit fuel system. You know, it's made me 550 horsepower on this truck, just a little by the way, that's all this truck has ever made on a dyno. Now this season, I do plan on really pushing the limits of this fuel system and i'm gonna guess that this setup this exact setup i have can get me to 650 700 ish 700 is kind of pushing it you know i i'm on 6 a.m so and so we're gonna have to uh uh see what how far we can get with this fuel system but anyways let me guys let me show you guys how i have it set up so first i have my fuel cell, you know, regular old 10 gallon fuel cell, that's about a hundred bucks from eBay. And then our fuel cell, first of all, we have it elevated. You know, if you've looked anything into an inline pump, you know that inline pumps do not pull fuel. They can only push it. So we have this slightly elevated with the sump tilted back. So then, that one our first line goes into our fuel pump pre-filter i should probably have a filter after that but i don't really know so it's okay anyways we have this uh 380 lph uh am fuel pump really similar to a uh, bosch 044 so then this pump now feeds our surge tank and then our surge tank now feeds our main line our return comes back to the surge and then the surge tank and the fuel cell are both connected now the surge tank essentially is so that you don't have fuel starvation really ever at all this pump will always fill this as you can see this surge tank isn't very big all right so this is what a bosch 044 looks like as you can see, if we set it right about where it sits in the tank, it almost touches the bottom of the tank. So think about it like this. This pump right here is going to always, always feed our surge tank. And if for whatever reason our surge tank goes low, 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 it can go almost all the way to here. This pump that is feeding our uh, rails always has fuel, so it will never, ever starve. <laughs> So the really, really nice thing about this setup is that some stock um, fuel pumps can feed a surge tank just because of what I explained, how no matter how low that goes, you know, your, your pump's always going to have fuel just because it's that deep in the surge tank. So you don't need a huge pump to feed the pump, which feeds your rails. So if you don't want to put a fuel cell in your car, you can just use your stock pump and that can feed your surge tank. Now, another thing, this surge tank that I bought, $70, guys, on eBay, $70, and it comes with a Bosch 044. That is the pump I just showed you guys, which is this one. It's obviously a replica, and this one went out on me. It didn't fully go out. It was just acting a little weird. You know, it stopped working, and then when I got back from this event, it was actually an Amarillo. I lost to a Jeep that race and I think it was because of the fuel pump and a few other things but the pump turned off and then it was acting funny but you know it's an eBay pump and it worked for like three or four months guys for $70 you know plus the tank or you could just buy the tank for like $40 on eBay I'll put a link to all of this and then buy a uh, the AEM 380 LPH that pump is the exact same shape and fits right into those surge tanks that are sold on eBay now I'm gonna give you guys a little uh, little insider little secret 
on how to save some money on some fuel line. You know, if you try and run a whole aftermarket fuel system, steel braided or nylon braided line, this stuff is expensive, you know, for 6 a.m. or 8 a.m. or whatever, you're talking six, seven dollars a foot. So, what you're gonna do is, this works for 6 a.m. So, you guys can see, those are hard lines. I don't have steel braided anything. That's a hard line. That hard line, you guys, you can buy that at AutoZone for like, I think it was $30. And man, I don't know how much, you know, I forgot because I bought it a long time ago. I bought it when I did my Datsuns fuel system. And I did both the Datsuns and the trucks with $30. I remember that for sure. I think it comes with 30 feet. It comes in a roll, you just go into AutoZone and ask him, hey, I need 3 8 fuel line. Uh, the hardest part about getting this stuff is <laughs> the f***ing idiot behind the counter at AutoZone is going to say, oh, we don't have that or this and that and blah, 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 because he's probably never seen it and he's too stuck trying to ask you for a year making model. You guys know how that goes, but just go in there. They should have it, you know. Maybe a manager or something can get it for you. It's cheap, cheap stuff, cheap way to run your fuel. <clears throat> now, let me show you uh, what we did up front. I forgot to mention, this is the uh, fitting you will need to go from your hard line, from your hard 3 8 line to your 6 a.m. fittings. This is called a uh, compression fitting. Let me unscrew this here. I don't think I have lines so I can show you right now, but basically this end slides over your hard line and then you put this little ring in there. I know you guys have seen them on like, you know, your, your cooler from your house, your swamp cooler and stuff, you know, plumbing, general plumbing has those little rings you put in there. And then you screw the rest of it in and then now you can go to AM. So let me show you what we got going on up here. So we have this hard line running all the way from our surge tank. The one that uh, comes out of the surge tank feeds this hard line. We go into our compression, then we can go into our fittings. And the way I have mine set up is I go to a Y block and each of these, one feeds one rail and the other feeds the other rail. You can see that. Boom, into one rail and into the other. And then we have our aeromotive regulator on this side, uh, you know, vacuum referenced or boost referenced regulator. If you are looking to make any sort of power, you always put this regulator after the rails. Uh, regulars before the rails are, you know, they're gonna, they're gonna keep you limited. So yeah, then obviously this one comes straight to here and then this crossover from this rail comes right into this side and the bottom of it is the return which goes back to the surge tank. Those 380 LPH fuel pumps from AEM, they are, you know, $150 each in town. I can buy them at a local Yearwood, you know, they sell them to me for like, I think 180 or something like that. So it's a pretty accessible pump and it's not very expensive and it's the same shape. So it fits in those uh, search tanks that fit a 044. It's the same shape as an 044. And for you guys running 8AN, I got a little, uh, little trick for you too. You're going to buy half inch copper line, but at Home Depot. This I have some of because I was trying to fix a compressor earlier this week. But this is it right here. It'll hold the pressure. I forgot how much pressure this stuff holds. I did ask at Home Depot and I think it said it on the box, but I do remember it's enough to uh, carry fuel, guys. And you do the same thing, AAN compression fitting, and then it goes to all your AN fittings and you just saved a bunch of cash on your fuel system. You know, you just saved 
I don't know, let's say you needed 20 feet and 8 AN is probably like $8 a foot. That's like $160 in line. If my math is correct, when you can buy it for like a dollar a foot, it's ridiculous guys. Probably not a dollar, it's probably a little more expensive than a dollar a foot, but it's definitely less than half the price for sure. And you know, you can use this general fuel system if you need to make a lot more power than you can, you know, one thing I would have done differently, but it's a little late, it's not too late now, I'm gonna have to do it eventually, is just start with 8 AN, especially if you have uh, aftermarket rails. Most aftermarket rails are all 8 AN, so you don't have to reduce or any of that. So if you just do 8 AN from the beginning all the way around, you know, it's gonna make it a little bit easier and you actually, don't have to buy as many fittings because you don't have to go from six to eight to your rails. Surge tanks from eBay, $30. They have one that's like 120 and it comes with two pumps. So, you know, that's another thing. That's a the next level for anybody that's making a little bit more power. You buy the one that has two fuel pumps, you either buy it without them and put your own in it, or you just, like I would do, is just buy it with the pump since it's so cheap and just use them both until they go out. And as far as injectors, guys, I'm running Injector Dynamics 850s. You know, those are probably gonna get maxed out this season as well. They're probably gonna get, you know, I'm probably gonna run out of duty cycle on those. We're actually coming up on that pretty quick. And now Injector Dynamics is the way to go with injectors, guys. Uh, everybody, every tuner I've talked to, everybody that I've asked to tune the truck, in the past or any of my cars whenever i talk to them i ask them what injector do you recommend everybody always says injector dynamics yes they're expensive but you know it's it's just top of the line stuff and it doesn't fail and injectors are very important guys injectors is is a very important thing um i'm probably gonna go up to, up this season get a little bit bigger ones because like i said all i have is 850s right now uh, just a few more tips guys before I finish off this video For one is if you have access to buy all these AN fittings locally to you I luckily do you know, maybe not everybody does but that's the one thing that I don't tend to buy online is fittings and that's just because <clears throat> For one they're expensive and locally they're marked up probably like 50 cents to a dollar. So yeah, it adds up but you know it's a lot of stuff and if you haven't built a lot of fuel systems, you're probably gonna mess up more than once. You're gonna forget one thing or you're gonna order the wrong stuff or whatever. So if you buy it locally, you have, you know, you're able to return stuff, you know. Fuel is, like I said, if you haven't built a lot of fuel systems, it's gonna be hard to get this spot on every fitting the first time. Unless you just sit down and draw everything out and you know exactly what you need then you can order online. Now that takes me to my second tip is, if you're gonna buy everything locally, you're probably doing this because like me, you're gonna have to return some stuff. I've done it a bunch of times where I go buy all kinds of stuff for a fuel system and you know, I mess up, I gotta return some things, buy different things or whatever. Now these fittings, they're, they're really sensitive. You can scratch them real easy. And once it's scratched or you know put on something or whatever they won't return it so the special wrenches for an fittings they're also very expensive so what i do is i get my crescent wrench and i wrap it up in uh electrical tape and that helps protect the fitting while you're tightening it up you know and even that way it looks nice once it's on the car you know if you really care about how the fitting is going to look once it's on put some electrical tape on your crescent wrenches and it's going to help protect them you know, uh, these, these fittings are expensive. You know, it's it's nice to have them look nice. And uh, that's also why I kind of try and save money on like line and stuff. You guys, you, it's, you don't realize how much fittings cost until you have to do it. I didn't realize how much all that stuff costs. You know, I walked out of local stores with $300 worth of fittings and I'm like, I don't even have that much stuff. It's just really expensive, that's why. I try and save money on line and the surge tank and pumps and things that I just showed you. 
So yeah, guys, that's going to be it uh, for now. If you have any questions on the fuel system or, you know, anything else you'd like to know, just drop it in the comments and uh, I'm going to try and answer everything as best as I can. Now, moving on, guys, if you live in Albuquerque or your surrounding areas, I'm now doing a 24-hour nitrous refills. So if you need nitrous just about any time of the day on a weekend or whatever, just let me know. Um, selling it pretty cheap like us on uh, facebook and instagram and that's where i have all the uh, prices posted up also stay tuned guys we have a uh, flashlight shootout roswell coming up as well as flashlight shootout amarillo is they're both this month i believe roswell's the 22nd amarillo's the 29th and the truck should be up and running soon and hopefully i can get some more uh, racing footage of it you know i've been wanting to get some but it's not running yet but yeah, guys, uh, other than that, if you haven't checked out the cooling system video, check it out. It's all about how we cool down this truck, radiators in the back, and a few other little tips for a cooling system. Thank you all for watching. Se la lavan.